The next book I finished was Tree, Tree of Sanquility. I almost did it again. Hey there, cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. It's only Tuesday and it's already been a week. See, my husband and I recently became eligible for our booster shot for the coronavirus vaccine, our third shot, and I had mine on Friday, and I was hoping that I would be able to film and like quick edit something to go up on Sunday, but I was in bed for 36 hours. Nothing too horrible, just sitting up and being human hurt. So I was horizontal and that was the best thing for me. Got a lot of rest in and my husband got his yesterday and he spiked really high fever that he's still suffering from now. And on top of that, I have two canker sores that are working together to make speaking painful and I've used numbing medication and I actually tried to film this before I went for my shot and I was incomprehensible <laughs> and I found myself not really talking about books because it hurt so much so things are slightly bare today we're going to give this another try as I talk about we're going to call this my April wrap-up part one reason being that end of March um, most of the books that I haven't talked about were for the booktube prize and we'll get into that and I'll just take the couple other books that were at the end of March and roll them over here. So those two book two prize books were How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith, which I absolutely adored, and A Little Devil in America by Hanifa Durki, which is also very, very good and I talk about in depth in my book two prize vlogs, so I'll have links to those down below so that you can check all that out. Also finished in March was A Spinster by the Sea by Grace Burroughs. This is the third book in the Sirens Retreat Quartet, which is two books by Grace Burroughs and two books by Erica Ridley, and I received these as advanced copies from the authors. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, this was my least favorite of the quartet, though. We have a woman who has been abandoned at the altar for a second time, and things aren't looking so good for her chances anymore, but she ends up meeting a guy, like, things happen. But what annoyed me maybe the most about this story is how her past trauma is used as a reveal at one point and I just wasn't a big fan of how everything came together. It didn't feel very cohesive and satisfying unfortunately. So yeah this one and they're all novellas so they're pretty short but um yeah not not a fave. And immediately after that I went to the fourth book Love Letters by the Sea by Erica Ridley. You know how much I love Erica Ridley and this is interesting in that it's a you've got male retelling and I think if you're gonna do one of those there are some major points about the story that you're gonna have to change to make it palpable 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 to current day audiences. She does that. I appreciate it very much. The hero is not a business magnate. He's the employee of a business magnate kind of sent to do his business and he, he's been sent to buy the sirens retreat and ends up talking a lot with the proprietor they end up falling in love and things happen the thing is is that if you know the movie well you will recognize scenes you will know how the general plot is going to go i found myself skimming parts because i'm like yep yep they're meeting in the coffee shop with the flower in the book i do like how she makes it fit in the regency we have some cameos for with people from previous books that are fun but I think if you're nostalgic for the movie you're probably gonna like this more than I did or if you haven't seen the movie this I think would go over much better because you won't be anticipating the story beats the way that I was that being said I gave it three stars because it's still fine it's good uh, it just isn't my favorite Ridley it's not where I would start with her but yes a solid addition to her oeuvre. Now we're into April proper and the first book that I finished was for the booktube prize quarterfinals round and like ra last round I'm not going to tell you the group that I'm reading I'm not going to tell you what book I'm talking about right now and instead give vague reviews that you can enjoy and kind of wonder about until my vlog comes out and the round is over at the end of May. It's like beginning of June. This first book I wasn't sure how I would feel about it but in the beginning it drew me in in spite of myself. It made me keep wanting to flip pages which is an accomplishment but as things went on I noticed some bits, some trends, some recurring themes let's say that I'm just not a fan of and I actually have some issues with on like a material substantial level that I absolutely can't say because it would give it all away. And hmm, and the writing in the end wasn't enough to completely save it when I have all these other 
qualms and things going on. So I ended up giving this three stars, which is solid considering that I really didn't know what I would think about it going in. But um, yeah, it's not going to be a standout for this round. The next book I finished was Tree, Tree of Tranquility. I almost did it again. Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. I picked this up because I liked her book Station Eleven and you know that's a dystopic thing going on and when I saw that this was science fiction and I was like you know what I've been meaning to get back in more literary type fiction let's give this a try. It's at least making gestures towards the genre and I know that her writing's decent and the writing is decent but I have a bunch of other problems with it. The book has chapters from many different times. So we start off in 1908 with a uh, English dandy guy who is from a titled family but has been exiled to Canada and he sees some weird stuff while he's there. There's an event happening, an anomaly let's say. And then we go to 2020 and we see some stuff at the very beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic and this is a pandemic novel you have been warned. And then we head to 20 no, 2200, in an age that feels very much like the current 2020, in that, guess what, pandemic, and we're following a self-insert character, Olive, who is basically Emily St. John Mandel, an author that's on tour, talking about her pandemic novel during a pandemic, and about her going back home to, you know, the moon colony and dealing with pandemic stuff there. That part especially I did not like because even though it's 2200, it reads exactly like 2020. Just instead of Zoom, we have holograms. Then we move to 2400 and again, weird stuff going on and we go back through all of those times one more time to reach back. And that's a lot for 200 pages, honestly, and there's not a lot of world building. The character stuff is thin. I personally don't like it when we're introduced to characters and as soon as I feel like I'm starting to get a feel for who they are, we move to a different time and place and I don't know if I'm ever going to see them again. I find that supremely frustrating. All of the main characters appear to be cishet and white, especially because race and ethnicity are largely ignored, which means that at least in my eyes, the author is just assuming that everybody's white, which not very cool. And as you move into the future time periods, there's more and more queer folks as side characters. And, you know, yay queer folks as side characters, but I almost feel like it was being used to signal the future in a way. And that's like, queer folks are more than like set dressing, you know? The self-insert character is obvious and not enlightening at all. It's like she just took some things that she couldn't get out of her head, like questions asked on book tour and decided to throw them in the book. And it doesn't come off well. It's not interesting. The science fiction elements are just don't come together all that great. This is supremely wanting in my opinion. So this was like two stars for me. And the last book I have to talk about today is my second book for the Book Two Prize quarterfinals. And I chose this one because it was the largest book in my group. And I was like, you know, I want to get this over with early. Don't think I'm gonna like it. And wow, was I wrong because this is so well done. It is so well put together. The narrative nonfiction writing is strong. And even though I wasn't interested in the subject all that much, it pulled me through to the very last page. And this book, it's a large reason why I read so much during Mid-Month Book Bash Weekend, because I finished this in the four days. It wasn't very clear from the vlog. Finished this in the four days of Mid-Month Book Bash Weekend. So very pleasantly surprised with this book. This one's kind of a surprise favorite. I hope it ends up in the top three, but as far as the, how the competition has been going so far, it's, it's already tight in this round and that, that makes me so happy. All right, so that's it for April wrap up part one and I'm very happy to be wrapping up so I can edit this and get it out and get back on the saddle, the booktube train, whatever you want to call it. So if you'd like to talk about any of these books or anything at all, let's have a gab down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.